Now let us go to the section 20. Section 20 speaks about the rights of the child in the womb. So under section 20 there are two conditions are required. Number one is the child must be in the womb at the time of the death of the interstate. This is a very very important condition. The child must be in the womb at the time of the death of the interstate. Second, he or she that is the child may be a male or female there is no difference. He or me, he or she must be born alive subsequently. These are the two important conditions. The child must be in the womb at the time of the death of the interstate is the one condition and second condition is the child has to be born alive subsequently. Then if these two conditions are fulfilled, child in the womb and born subsequently alive. If these two conditions are fulfilled, the child will inherit the property of the interstate in the same way as if he or she was born before the death of the interstate. The child was not born at the time of the death of the interstate, but the law presume, law presume that the child was born, whether he or she, the child was born before the death of the interstate. In other words, the law considers that the child was present at the time of the death of the interstate. The law considers the child was present even though he was not there still the child is in the womb of the mother. But the law considers that the child was present at the time of the death of the interstate. So the inheritance shall be deemed to be vest in such cases from date of the death of the interstate. The child is entitled to take the property from the date of the death of the interstate and not the date of the birth of the child and not the birth of the child. So two conditions, the child is in the womb and born subsequently alive, then the child will be considered that he, he was present at the time of the interstate and he will take the property from the death of the interstate and not from the birth, birth date of the birth of the place. But there has always been a conflict as to what is the period of gestation. Some says that it is a 296, some says that it is a 396, but section 112 of the Evidence Act, if you look into the section 112 of the Evidence Act 1872, it clearly lays down that it is 280 days. So in the absence of any evidence, in the absence of any evidence to the contrary, the conception shall have to be presumed to take place 280 days prior to its birth. The conception may be presumed, it is a presumption, presumed to have taken place 280 days prior to its birth. So these are the one illustration I will explain how the property will be distributed if the child is in the womb. A dies, A dies leaving behind a pregnant, the wife, woman, that is the wife is a pregnant, wife is a pregnant and a daughter, only two heads, only two heads. A dies and there are only two heads to him, one is the pregnant wife and the daughter. And after the death of A, the wife gave a birth to the son. Subsequently, the son was born. So, how many heads are there? Even though the son born later, the Kala considered that the son was present at the time of the death of the A. So, there are three heads mother, son, and daughter. All are class 1 heads. So the property will be distributed equally, so each will get one third of the property, one third of the property. So the deceased wife is a pregnant D and wife get the son born later, so one third of the property will be taken by wife, son and daughter. But the son died after a week, the son died after a week. 
what happened to the son's proper one third of the property who are the heirs here there are only two heirs one is the mother and other is the sister the son had two heirs one is the mother and the other is the sister mother is falls in the class 1 heir sister falls in the class 2 heir so when there is a class 1 heir class 2 is not entitled to take any property so the son's one third of the property is take he will be shall devolve on the mother shall devolve on the mother and sister will get nothing so what is the shares of wife and uh, daughter the wife is receiving one third from her husband and one third as a mother from the son that is her total property is two third her total property is two third whereas the uh, daughter is getting only one third from the father and from the brother she did get nothing because she is a class 2 heir so how the property will be suppose if the son is survived if the son is survived all will get one third of the property equally mother will get one third son will get one third and daughter will get one third but here the son died after a week so again his property will be goes back to the class 1 heirs that is only the mother the mother will take one third of the property and the sister will get nothing because the sister is a class 2 so this is the rights of the child in the womb it says about section 20 section 21 section 21 lays down a presumption in case of simultaneous death that is this section applies in cases of simultaneous death that is two persons died one after the other two persons died one after the other and there is no evidence there is no proof and it is not known to anybody who died earlier there is no evidence none of them have seen who died earlier so in such cases according to section 21 lays down a presumption that the anger will be deemed to be survived the elder the anger shall be deemed to be survived the elder this is only the artificial presumption this presumption will not work or will not apply where their facts proved otherwise where there is a clear evidence who died earlier suppose if there is a clear evidence and the evidence shows clearly who died earlier then this presumption does not work out is not applicable is not applicable this presumption applies only when there is no evidence who died earlier i will give one simple example father and son both died in a air crash or while they are coming traveling in the car in the midnight an accident happened both died none of them known who died first there is no evidence or the husband and wife both have shot dead by firing a pistol both husband had died on the spot none of them knows who died first then in such cases this presumption will apply wife is anger son is anger so the son survived the fa father and the wife is anger so she survived the husband so the property of the father passed to the son and from son to their heirs similarly the property of husband will passes to the wife and the property again distributed to the according to the heirs of the wife this is the how the property uh, will be so, so only in the absence of presumption it's or in the absence of uh, evidence in the absence of evidence this presumption will work out if there is a clear evidence for father and uh, son both met, met an accident and the son died on the spot and father while taking to the hospital uh, 
either on the way or while taking a treatment in the hospital, the father died. There was a clear evidence who died earlier, the son died earlier. Then this presumption is not applicable in these cases. So presumption is applicable very clear where there is no evidence to know who died earlier. So the presumption is the anger shall be deemed to be survived the elder. So this is section 21.